everyone. I am here to talk about four books that were recommended to me on Instagram. Uh, so here we are, you know, it's the start of a new year. And I know that in past years, I have made kind of too big of goals. Um, and then I get overwhelmed and the shiny new goals wear off. And so I'm hoping this year, you know, the things that I have will spur me on uh, to do more things. So I do have a whole video coming out about my goals. Um, but before that, I just wanted to tell you about these books. Uh, so last year, at the beginning of the year, I asked on my Patreon if people could recommend me um, books that they thought I would love. And so I, um, I loved the idea of doing it at the very beginning of the year. I read The Dollmaker of Krakow, which was a favorite book of the year. And um, I uh, just lost kind of the vim and vigor for the project after that. I think I got sidetracked with other things. I don't know what happened. Um, and then just by the time maybe March rolled around, uh, I just felt very overwhelmed and I didn't carry on with the project. So I'm trying to have a kind of solution for that. And that is that each month on Instagram, I will ask for book recommendations. And I'm going to have a first place, second place, and third place. Um, and I'm hoping it will keep things fresh because I think if I just don't, if I see a new list of books each month, then I'll have new bookish excitement. So hopefully that will happen. The reason I have four um, that I'm talking about this time is that there was, a, there was a fourth that I just couldn't resist. Like I was really toying with reading this book anyway. Um, so the first book that was recommended uh, to me is Anastasia Krupnik by Lois Lowry. Now I have only read, I think, The Giver by Lois Lowry. I remember enjoying it. It was a long time ago. I was very, you know, maybe like 10 when I read The Giver. I can't remember precisely when. Maybe 10 would be a bit young. I'm not sure. But I, I read it in elementary school. I know that much. And um, it was, uh, yeah, just it did make an impression on me. Um, so that is, you know, one of the few books that I remember from my child, childhood, which is very sad. I don't remember a lot of my reading. Um, but I am really excited to try another one by Lois Lowry, especially because this has some of the marks of a series that would be very Kate Howe approved. Um, and there's, yeah, like, I, so it is a series. And so I will just be trying the first one. If I enjoy the first one, then I will continue on. Um, I'm hoping that the edition I have coming on hold from the library has illustrations because that would just be such a delight to get to read an illustrated middle grade book. Um, and we will see what it's like. But uh, I am curious to try, you know, I'm always looking for more middle grade to love. Uh, so I will let you know what I think of that one. So I thought it would be fun at the beginning of each month. I guess this will be my version of TBRs for the year, unless, you know, for special events, um, I do a TBR. Uh, but other than that, I thought this could be fun each month to tell you at the beginning of the month and then at the end of the month or the beginning of next month, maybe wrap up the previous month and tell about the new months. Um, so yes, that's the first first place recommendation. Um, and then second place was The Homemaker by Dorothy Canfield Fisher. This is one that I have been uh, wanting to read for a while because it is so talked up. The only hesitation that I have is that if it's, if it subtly or not so subtly conveys the message that domesticity is oppression. Um, I think that is a lie that in modern society we have been fed. And also, especially because it's so ironic, like who wants to live in a home that doesn't feel cozy? Um, so if that book is really pushing that, then I'm going to have trouble liking it. But I'm going to go in open-minded and hopefully I will enjoy it. Um, I checked out the audiobook from Hoopla and um, I really like the narrator. Uh, I do have trouble more enjoying American narrators. Um, so I was really relieved that I love her voice so much. And then in third place, and the one that I'm probably the most intrigued by because I'm in wintertime, I just get very much in the mood for fairy tales. And it is The Golden Princess and the Moon. And it is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty. And I think the author is a person of faith. So I'm hoping there will be lots of truth, beauty, and goodness just sprinkled into this and um, people fighting for um, good things to happen in the world and um, just being willing to sacrifice if it means others can uh, can uh, live on in a better world. Uh, I'm just hoping to be very moved by it. I will see if I am. It just seems to be like it could be a really beautiful book. So I got a Kindle copy of that. My library did not have it. So I went ahead and got that on Kindle. And I'm excited to try it. Um, you know, I would love eventually to have a kind of retelling of all of the, you know, big fairy tales 
um, a, a, you know, a different favorite retelling of all of the big fairy tales. So, so far I have, you know, uh, Sleeping, uh, I have The Little Mermaid covered, Cinderella definitely covered, um, The Goose Girl covered, um, and so we'll see if this maybe covers Sleeping Beauty. I am looking for a good Snow White one. I've tried a couple and they just feel so lonely and I cannot handle it. <laughs> so if you know of a good Snow White retelling, because I do love the concept of Snow White, let me know if you know one. So then the fourth one that my friend Amy over at Amy of Hearthridge recommended, um, and I just kept thinking about it, and I thought there were only used copies online, and then I looked on Amazon, and lo and behold, there's a new copy, and it's supposed to come in the mail like any minute now. I wanted to show you the illustrations. I think it's supposed to be illustrated, but it is called Winter Cottage, and it is by Carol Ryrie Brink of Caddy Woodlawn fame, but also more recently to me, um, Family Grandstand and Family Sabbatical. I just adored those books. Um, and I really hope I fall in love with this book. I think it's all about a family that are traveling and they find this abandoned cottage and they make it their own and they make it cozy and warm and a place where they make memories. And it just sounds wonderful. And I'm pretty sure Amy says that it's her favorite out of Carol Ryrie Brink's books. Um, so I, I want to slowly work my way through reading much more by her. Um, she also has this one that I'm uh, toying around uh, getting for the spring. Uh, it's The Pink Hotel, I think is what it's called. And it's all set in Florida and about all of these quirky residents living in a hotel. And I just realized that Carol Ryrie Brink and Kate DiCamillo kind of have some similarities in their uh, plot points. So those are the four books recommended to me on Instagram. I will be asking for February book recommendations uh, towards the end of the month. Now I'm not planning on necessarily reading, you know, three to four books each month that are recommended, but I am such a, uh, I'm such a DNF'er. If I just, if I'm not enjoying something, I won't read it. Um, so I wanted to have, you know, some backups. So there are, you know, if I don't enjoy the first place one, then I'll move on to the second. If I don't enjoy the second one, then I'll move on to third place. Or if I'm just having a really wonderful time, I will read all of them. Um, so I'm definitely going to be reading Winter Cottage though, even though it didn't make the top three because I bought a physical copy. The library did not have it. Um, so yes, that is all I have to tell you about the Instagram books and I will let you know how I like them. And I hope you are all having a wonderful day and I will be back with another video soon. Bye.